Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're finally gonna get around to unboxing, setting up, installing, and configuring the flow rate of my brand new Pentair UV sterilizer. All right, I figured the best way to approach this video is to break it down into three parts, and I'll put chapter indicators down below if you wish to skip to any of those three parts to uh, narrow in on the part that you're most interested in. We'll start off with an unboxing and a setup. We'll move on into an installation, and last but not least, we'll set up into dialing in the flow rate to get exactly the outcome that I'm after. So uh, let's get on into that unboxing. All right, the day is here. My brand new Pentair 80 watt smart UV is here. And uh, what a beast it is, we're coming around the front here. Holy moly, what a, what a huge unit. I mean, I don't know if you can see the size of me, I'm a big boy and um, <laughs> this is a huge box. We'll see just how big it is. I know this uh, UV is meant to be, we use a knock over our compost. The UV is 114 centimeters long and the box is probably, okay, yeah, it's not quite as big as the box because we've got the, uh, couple of bits and pieces we we've got it looks like a tube and a sleeve I'll sit that aside as well we have if I can get to it oh the UV itself let me just sit that one aside so I can get this box out of the way please don't fall and uh, we have what I'm assuming is the ballast. Yep, we got the ballast, sweet. Let me get all this packaging out of the way. All right, there we go. <laughs> Everything out of the boxes. I'm not gonna take the, uh, the quartz sleeve and the uh, UV tube out of their uh, little packages just yet because um, I will do that at the moment I install them. I don't wanna get them out and risk breaking them before then. You can also see that we've got this gigantic uh, ballast. What a beauty. Now it does have a little uh, warning on there that this ballast is not submersible. Completely understandable. That being said, it does look to be fairly uh, water resistant. I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't want to put it under the water obviously, but it doesn't have any exposed wires or anything. It's all very nicely sealed up there. It does come with 50 mil unions for the inlets and outlets. Now, for those wondering at home, these are a slip fit. They suit a 50 mil Australian PVC pipe. So I've made a couple of little adapters here that should slide in there like that. Beautiful. It's going to get me onto my soft hosing, which will make it nice and neat for the installation out in my uh, chiller box. And uh, that's kind of, I mean, obviously you have this, you have that. You put the uh, quartz sleeve in down the end here. Oh yeah, that's a tight fit. Oh, there we go. So our quartz sleeve will fit into here. That'll run down to the end here. We then put our uh, tube, our UV tube inside the sleeve. That will have a fitting that will plug onto the ballast. Happy days. So I guess there's nothing left to do other than, uh, of course, read the instructions and uh, set, oh, here we go. This is what actually, that will actually secure onto the uh, onto the top up here. We want to make sure that uh, that's got a nice seal. Yeah, nice, okay. Again, I'll read the instructions. I'm gonna to get to work putting the, Q, uh, the quartz sleeve in this, the UV tube in this, and um, of course, reading the instructions, and then we'll make it happen. Let's get into it. Okay, so really only two major tips here while assembling the unit. First of all, sit down and read the instructions from cover to cover because there is some very important things you need to follow. And secondly, probably the most important thing to follow is to make sure you do not touch the tube or the sleeve with your bare hands. Try to use a cloth or a glove or something just to make sure you don't get any, any oils from your fingers on these as it will create hot spots when it's on. 
Other than that, just make sure you follow all of the O-ring locations and gasket locations just to make sure that this device stays watertight. And then also make sure that when you set it up for the first time that you visually inspect it to make sure that it is not leaking. You don't want to get water leaking out into any of the electrical components of this device. So uh, like I said, read the instructions cover to cover and you'll be fine. All right, now that the unit is unboxed and set up, let's go about in looking at how I've installed this unit because I've done it a little bit differently by installing it outside and in line with my chiller. So I'm gonna take you through that. One thing I will point out is that I use these incredible clamps from a good friend of mine, Adrian Yap. He 3D printed these precisely for my requirements. They fit like a glove and they just give me a really nice mount for the uh, UV sterilizer. One thing that is very important with a UV is that you make sure that the outlet is higher than the inlet. So you either need to have it vertically so that the air bubbles can come up and out, or if you're gonna lay it horizontally, you just need to have it up on a little bit of a diagonal so that those air bubbles aren't gonna get trapped inside the unit itself. So whilst I got a pair of these off uh, Adrian, I've actually only got one mounted at the moment and I've even got a little spacer underneath it just so that at the outlet end, I can lift it up so that all of those air bubbles are gonna come up and out of the reactor. But Enough talking about it, let's go have a look at how I've installed this unit in my setup. Okay, so I guess the first place to look at the installation is inside the cabinet itself. We'll just come along here and open this up. And if you can recall, I'm actually running two Abyss A200 pumps. Now, the one on the left here is my dedicated return line. And the one on the right here is my dedicated accessories line. Now, I do have them connected via this cross pipe here, which is currently closed. But if I need to remove one of those pumps for maintenance, I can open that up and that will allow the other pump to manage the, uh, the flow requirements, whether it be for the return or for the, uh, for the accessories. Now, the accessories line, if I get the pumps down there so you can see them, <laughs> it's a little bit hard to get the camera in there, but what you can see here is this one here is actually the accessories pump. That pulls the water in first. And the main return line actually faces that way and pulls water in from this way. It gets most of its feed from this line here, which is the return back from the chiller and UV. That ensures that, well, I shouldn't say it ensures, but it gives me the most possibility of making sure that I'm not sending water from the chiller and UV just around in an endless loop. It should get drawn in by this dirty big of his A200 here, which will push it back up into the tank. It's the closest thing I can do to a closed loop without having more outlets at the back of the tank. So I, I have that pipe there, which goes out to the accessories, comes up through that back wall and it comes under the cabinet here. Goes under this door here and out into my box outside, which is where my UV and chillers house. So let's go have a look at that. All right, here we are. I had this box custom made by a friend of mine to uh, suit the requirements. We had this space here next to the tank, which I could use for uh, the chiller. And as it turned out, I ended up using it for the UV as well. And we managed also to fit uh, a little custom dog's kennel in the end there as well, which meant that I could get rid of a dog's kennel that was sitting where that placemat was and uh, won me a few brownie points. Now, the basis of this box is that it's made out of uh, decking material, so it's uh, it's fine. You see a bit of water sitting on it there. We've got pretty uh, wet weather in uh, Melbourne today, and um, that's fine. It can handle a bit of a uh, little bit of water sitting on it. That's no issue at all. You can see the uh, chiller outlet there, and uh, up this end, it's kind of hard, hard to see on camera, but that uh, panel there is actually mesh, and that allows the chiller to draw a nice cool air in. When we open up the box. You can see the uh, Teco chiller sitting there and it has its intake at this end so that it can draw that cool air in through that, uh, through that mesh end, draw that in and then pump out the hot air this way. But uh, the point of this video is to have a look at the UV sterilizer itself. And you can see that uh, I have the inlet at this end and the outlet at this end. The reason why I've done that is this is the end with the seal for the uh, tube. You normally want to have that as the high end, just in case there is any sort of uh, leak or any issue like that. You want to make sure that that end where uh, all the electrical connections and things are is up at the highest point. Now, I did mention that I'm using the uh, clip from uh, Adrian. As you can see at the moment, I haven't fixed it in place. It has been there a couple weeks now. I'm just making sure that the UV is sitting exactly where I want it. I have it sitting up on a little bit of wood and the spacer, where at this end, I just have it sitting on the base. So I've got a nice little uh, angle there. I recommend you use an app on your phone if you can't get a... Um, 
if you can't get an actual level in there, but just make sure that you do have at least a good few degrees of uh, rise to make sure that any bubbles in there are not going to sit in the UV body, causing hot spots. They're going to get flushed out and, and keep moving on. So that hose that I mentioned, it comes in, it's got uh, some insulation on it, comes through the wall, up into my UV sterilizer, flows along my UV sterilizer, out of the UV, into the chiller, then from the chiller, again insulated, back along here and out, back into the tank through that line that we mentioned. The reason why I've gone UV then chiller is, believe it or not, the UV does actually create a little bit of heat in the water, and I'd much rather remove the heat that this generates as a byproduct instantly. So if the water comes out of the UV hot, the chiller pulls the temperature back straight away rather than having the chiller pick it up after it's already gone through the tank. I'd rather get the hottest point of the tank water now, chill that out and get it out of here. So that's where my unit's mounted. Um, it also has the convenient ability of... Also has the convenient ability of... Uh, Having it's kind of hard to see here in the daylight, but uh, at night time I can actually see the uh, UV window there, and I can make sure the globe is on. To the naked eye, I can just actually see that the glow is on. Probably can't pick it up on camera though. So that's the outdoor box. That's how I've installed the UV. It's working quite well for me so far. All right, now the fun part. We're going to dial in the flow rate now. As you may recall, I've got this unit in line with my chiller, and that's because the flow rate that I'm looking for to address white spot is very, very similar to the flow rate of my chiller. The chiller has a recommended flow rate of about 600 to 800 liters per hour. I'm actually looking for about 900 to 1,000 liters per hour, but I could dip a little bit slower if I wanted to. So and I'm going to show you now how I've dialed that in. All right, so for me to get a thousand liters per hour, I'm looking at 36 seconds to fill 10 liters. So I've got my drum here and I've measured out five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, so on. But obviously the 10 liter mark's the one I'm focused on. So I've got this drum empty. I've hooked up a hose to my chiller return, as in the line's coming back from the chiller. I've got it running as per normal. All I'm gonna do is hit the start button on this stopwatch here and see how long it takes to get to the 10 liter mark. Obviously, if it takes longer than 36 seconds, we just need to increase the speed of our pump. And if it doesn't take 36 seconds, we need to slow our pump down. So I guess there's not much more to do other than to uh, get the line here, which it's gonna make sure I don't uh, splash myself. You see our flow coming back there. It's pretty quick, a thousand liters per hour is actually a lot of flow. It doesn't seem like a lot of flow when we're talking a lot of other things, but uh, it should be quite a bit. So it's gonna get that ready to go. I'll get my finger near the start stop and Let's see how we go. Remember, we're chasing 36 seconds. So being a first run, I don't actually know exactly where it's gonna be, but uh, it'll give us a baseline to start with at least. About halfway now, we're probably pretty close to halfway. We might need to speed the pump up a touch. We'll see how it finishes up. Or well, maybe a bit longer, probably only five liters now. We just hit the 36 second mark, so it appears that we will need to speed the pump up a bit. All right, we're about to hit 10 liters. It took us 55 seconds. So which, you know, we're not miles off, but we need to speed that flow up a little bit more, which surprises me. That's a lot faster flow than I thought it was. So um, looks like we're gonna get quite a bit of flow going through that uh, chiller and or uh, UV. So um, I'm gonna speed the pump up a bit more and um, we'll do the test again. All right, next take, let's see how we go. I think we might be on the money this time. Oh, it's got to be close. I think we're going to be close enough to call it. 38 seconds. I'm going to call that um, near enough to 36 seconds, considering that uh, I do have a considerable amount of extra hose. Um, I've probably got a meter extra length of hosing on the outlet here, which of course will add a little bit more resistance when I replace that with uh, just this short uh, outlet it's probably going to uh, flow a little bit more and bring us back to that 36 second mark. So I'm gonna say that I've got my, uh, my accessory line plumbed in to give me the uh, 1000 liters per hour, which is going to tackle white spot and other parasites in my reef tank. We'll also have the slight benefit of uh, picking up and uh, probably uh, sterilizing any water bound algae. So it uh, should give me some good clarity in the tank. 
All right, now just to touch on and really uh, try to explain the benefit of the water clarity component, despite the fact that I've been running the flow through this reactor, even a little slow for white spot control, not even looking at the, uh, the water clarity control, I just wanted to turn the lights off so you could have a look through uh, the end of the tank here. We're looking through 1600 liters of water here. Um, it is ridiculously clear. In fact, you wouldn't, you can't even see water in the tank. It's so, so clear. We're also looking through about uh, 38 mil of glass there with 19 mil panels on each end. A great testament to uh, the quality glass that Waterbox use. But um, wow, the water clarity is uh, just like nothing else. And uh, my glass, went from requiring a cleaning every, maybe every second day while I'm absolutely pumping some light into this tank. Obviously not at the moment, I've got the lights off so I can really uh, show how clear the water is. But now, even when I have the lights on, um, the glass I'm finding, even at that slow water flow rate, which is obviously probably gonna be improved now for uh, waterborne algae, I've been down to cleaning the glass maybe every four days, maybe even every five days. Um, so it's definitely having an impact on the clarity, which is, just an absolute added uh, side effect. I, I didn't get this to try and get water clarity. I've always had pretty good water clarity, but uh, this is gonna help that a lot. But more importantly, it's gonna just manage those white spot outbreaks. Um, I'm not planning to do white spot eradication. That's not my, uh, my goal or aim for this tank, but I do wanna just sort of keep it under control. I wanna make sure we don't get any outbreaks. And um, I'm really pleased with how the Penta UV is working. I think it's gonna do that job perfectly well. So. I'm gonna get the lights back on this tank and um, <laughs> I'll give you a look at it there and then uh, we'll wrap this video up. As promised, the lights are back on the tank. I'll show you the water clarity here. It is a little bit harder for the camera to pick it up because um, with the lights on it tends to, I don't know, just create this little bit of a haze, but uh, I'm looking at screen now and it still <laughs> looks pretty clear. The, um, yeah, water clarity, wow, super impressive. All right, guys, there you go. That's how I've gone about unboxing, setting up, installing, and dialing in my UV sterilizer. I've been super impressed with the uh, Pente unit that I picked up by Fresh by Design. If you haven't seen my uh, video on selecting and sizing a UV sterilizer, be sure to check that out. I'll put the link in the description and I'll also put a little card up at the end of this video to make sure you can find it there. It'll be up there or there, something like that. Make sure that you check out all the information on the Fresh by Design website. Very, very helpful. Penta are brilliant as well. They're very precise and very exact on what you need from a UV sterilizer, what your fluorate is, what size it needs to be, how to get the result you're after from a UV sterilizer rather than just basically closing your eyes, picking something and then uh, crossing your fingers. That's not how I like to operate. I like to follow science and I like to make sure that we're getting things right the first time. And I'm happy to say that the Pentair has absolutely hit the nail on the head. And I'm not surprised that it's becoming the UV sterilizer of choice for so many reefers out there. I'll probably end things off there, guys. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever it may be, feel free to pop it in the comment section down below. As always, if you thought it was a good video, and only if you thought it was a good video, please do give it a thumbs up. That tells the YouTube algorithm you thought it was good and will recommend this video to more reefers, which ultimately will help me out and hopefully also help out your fellow reefers. And last but not least, if you're not a subscriber, please guys, just hit that subscribe button down in the corner. That's the best thing you can do to help this channel out. It costs you no money at all, take two seconds of your time. It'll help bump me up in that uh, YouTube algorithm and make sure that I can keep producing videos like this for all you reefers out there at home. Other than that, guys, I will leave it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas break, had a happy New Year's, and are ready to hit 2021 with the ground, ready to hit the ground running in 2021. Thanks all. Till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Bye.